Hi everybody. Today I'm going to talk about simulation of electron absorption modulator. So my name is Majid from Ozenic Engineering. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction of electron absorption modulator. Um, then I will talk about how we can calculate the optical mode and absorption characteristic of modulator. And finally, I will show you how we can create a compact circuit model for the electron absorption modulator. So the physics behind the electron absorption modulator for the box and conductor is uh, Franz Kildish effects. So in Franz Kildish effect, so as you can see here, uh, we can see the, the band diagram of the box and conductor, uh, valence lamp and band and, and uh, band cap energy. Uh, if we uh, connect reverse bias voltage to the uh, to the modulator, uh, we can see that our band gap uh, is tilted and electron can transient from the valence band to the conduction band by lower frequency, lower energy actually, because electron can go to this level and this level, the electron in this level have same energy on the conduction band. So the electron can transient you can tunnel the to the conduction. But for this reason, you can see that the, the absorption coefficient versus photon energy uh, curves uh, is uh, red shifted, shifted to the uh, longer wavelengths. And uh, so for instance, uh, in this case, uh, in this photon energy, we can see that we don't have any absorption coefficient when we when we disconnect the voltage source, but when we connect the voltage source, we can see that we have a, a absorption coefficient. So for the for the confinement for the quantum structure like heterostructure uh, semiconductor, we can see the uh, for instance, uh, if you can see that this structure has uh, indium gallium arsenide and uh, gallium arsenide. For the gallium arsenide, we, we can see a, a lower uh, band gap. And uh, so for this reason, we have a confinement of uh, electron and holes through the uh, quantum well. And uh, also uh, in this region, we have a larger uh, group index for for this reason we have a um, confinement of uh, uh, photon and we can create a waveguide based on uh, this structure. So if we uh, connect the reverse bias voltage, reverse bias voltage to the to the modulator to the quantum structure, we can see that our band gap also is tilted. And the uh, uh, electron moves through the uh, positive poles and holes moves to the negative moles. So for this reason, the peak of density of a state also is shifted. And if we look at the absorption versus wavelengths for the quantum structure, we can see that, the, for instance, for the V equal zero, we have a two peaks. These are excitonic peaks. And when we insert a voltage, a reverse bias voltage, or when we connect the reverse bias voltage, we can see that the, our uh, uh, curve is shifted to the longer wavelengths or red shifted. So uh, for instance, we can use, uh, uh, if we work for instance in this wavelengths, we can see that uh, when we don't have any voltage, we have a excitonic peak in this region. But when we insert a voltage, we can see that the, our excitonic peak is uh, disappeared in this region. Uh, so for instance, if we use in this point. So if uh, we work uh, in this wavelength, we can see that the, uh, we, in the case of uh, uh, voltage, we have a larger absorption 
for instance, in this wavelength. So for the uh, for the signal analysis uh, of the modulator, we have uh, we need a DC bias voltage and AC signal. So for instance, for DC bias voltage, we can tune our uh, our working region point, working function point. So this is our DC bias voltage, and this is our swing voltage, and this is uh, input electrical signal. Uh, so when we have an input electrical signal in this bias point, we can see uh, we have an optical uh, signal. So by how we can control the Tmax and Tmin for the this case, uh, so it depends on the bias voltage point. To have a symmetric uh, swing, so it's better... Uh, this point is biased in the middle of uh, our linear region. Uh, for the figure of merit of the modulator, so we have an extinction ratio. The extinction ratio depends on uh, confinement factor, absorption difference, and length. So we can control the confinement factor by changing the structure, for instance, using a slow light, and uh, we can also increase the length uh, to increase the extinction ratio. So regarding to the confinement factor is uh, present in actually overlap of optical node uh, with the active region. So we have a different scheme for, uh, uh, for modulator design. We can use a quantum dot. So as you can see here, when we connect the voltage, our, in, our absorption peak is decreased, or we can use a quantum valor graphene. So we can see that if we uh, connect a voltage, we have a red shifted, and uh, in that we work on this wavelength. So in the case of no voltage, we don't have any absorption. But when we insert and connect the voltage, we can see we have a large absorption. And we can see in this case uh, to manage the modulator. Or we can work on based on ex uh, excitons, excitonic peaks. So as you can see here, when we don't have any voltage, we have exciton peak in this wavelength. But when we in in connect the voltage, so our excitonic peak is disappeared. Or we can use a bulk a bulk semiconductor. So also, for instance, in this wavelengths, when our uh, semiconductor uh, voltage is connected, we have, uh, for instance, uh, um, smaller uh, absorption. So what is the modulator workflow design uh, in this part? So we will use a numerical ANSYS numerical mode to calculate the motor effective index overlap with the um, gain region. Then we will calculate the model modal property uh, effective index versus wavelength group index confinement factor. Then we insert these parameters to the numerical multiphysics in a charge part. Then we can calculate the absorption coefficient and transmission as a function of applied bias voltage. So in this case, we can calculate the uh, transmission versus uh, wavelengths and voltage and uh, group delay. And finally, we can, uh, in the numerical interconnect, we can create a circuit model and we can calculate the time domain modulator response. And uh, yeah, we can design an, our modulator. So let's go to the numerical mode to calculate the uh, modal properties. <laughs> 